Hey guys, Redneck Wannabe here. I hope all is well with you and your family today. So, I don't, I don't, I don't claim to be an expert by any stretch of the imagination. But I've had a couple friends of mine ask me about because uh, they've they've heard me talk about fermentation and the fodder and all that, and so they've asked me about it and they're and they've asked me if I've put something, uh, you know, if I've, I've uploaded anything and and I haven't just because. I'm still learning. Um, I never would have thought there was this much to, and I don't necessarily know if it's learning, but just get comfortable with, uh, with, with the fermentation and the fodder. And so, you know, I'm going to try my best to explain the way I see it and the way I understand it. But again, by no stretch of the imagination do I know, am I an expert, you know, as, as, uh, as, as my uh, as my friend Jane Noll would say, I am no fermentologist by any any stretch. So um, there's uh, uh, a friend of mine, Robbie, has has really helped me to uh, to understand and to learn, um, you know, about fermentation. And from what I've seen, how it's worked for me is the chickens are definitely eating less, um, and the pigs are. Uh, are eating less as well and so I'll show you um, alright so here here's the here's the way I understand it when you take the um, the raw grain whether it's corn chicken scratch uh, wheat barley whatever you take that seed and and I, this is not I, I'm not gonna get it right but I'll get the, the the general idea right and so you take this seed which is I want to say a, a, a a carb, I think. I think it's a carb, and when you when you when you germinate it, it changes the micronutrients. It changes the nutrients at a at a, at a uh, molecular level to where I think it's simple sugars and proteins. And so the same thing with fermentation is you put a grain in a fermentation bucket, and that fermentation changes the nutrients at a, at a molecular level. So it makes the nutrients more readily digestible, and so the animal can take it up, and they don't necessarily have to eat as much to get the same nutrition as they would a dry feed. So that's the way I understand it. You know. Uh, scientifically, it's probably not correct, but generally, that's that's the way it is. That's the way I understand it. So I'll show you what I'm doing. Um, here is I've got two. I've got uh, three things that I'm doing really. So here is the fermentation that uh, that I've got chicken scratch in. So I've got this, and then I have I'm sprouting grains over there. And then up at the, the farm, um, I've got, uh, I'm fermenting corn. And the, the bucket that I'm using for corn, I just got a 55 gallon plastic, uh, cl plastic container and I, I cut the lid off and put everything in there. And these that I bought, or this that I bought at Home Depot for I think 20, 15, 20, 25 dollars, something like that, is hands down better than that 55 gallon drum that I uh, that I originally started off using. So what it is, is I pour, uh, um, I just put tap water in here and then I let it sit for a couple days just for all the uh, chlorine to uh, vaporize off or whatever. And then um, a while ago, I bought a aquarium bubbler, you know, the, the air stone. And then there's, you know, the tube and and my, you can't see it, but my little pump is right under there. And I bought this at a garage sale for a dollar. So there's two ways to ferment. You can, uh, you know, if you ferment, you've got anaerobic and aerobic. This is aerobic, so there's oxygen in there. And R Robbie says it's a sweet smell. I don't necessarily know if it's a sweet smell, but it's not a sour disgusting smell by any stretch so I've got the um, I've got the bubbler in there and you know every day whenever I come out you know I'm stirring that water around and so you know my kids think it just smells disgusting it's not that bad to me but there is a there is a smell to it and so this is an and this is a aerobic fermentation 
uh, and anaerobic is without oxygen and so if I didn't have that bubbler in there it would be anaerobic and then it would start to smell really bad now it's my understanding that with chickens either or is fine just because their guts are so strong but if you use it for you know pigs uh, you know, I guess maybe goats uh, who knows uh, but but uh, but for pigs you need an aerobic uh, just because it'll it'll um, oh God, what's the word? it just get bad so if you if you don't have a bubbler uh, one thing you can do is get a boat paddle or a shovel or whatever and just you know once or twice a day just you know do like that get the get the uh, the oxygen in the uh, in the water and that should keep it uh, aerobic so I put a 50 pound bag of chicken scratch in here about three weeks ago and then some of that wheat that I got from uh, from the grain elevator last week I think it was uh, I put I don't know maybe a five gallon bucket in here and so this amount of fermented grain is what I will give the chickens once a day and so I'll give them this and then I will give them fermented I mean I'm sorry uh, sprouted wheat now during the winter time or the cooler months I can make this uh, as fodder but when the heat comes then not so much because what happens is it starts to uh, starts to mold if I start you know if I make I'm sorry I'm trying to do all this one-handed if I try to make this fodder uh, which I've, I've done a previous video on that but if I try to make this fodder so uh, winter wheat barley oats um, stuff like that then uh, it will start to sprout but after a couple days it'll start to get all moldy and you know you're it's you're you know, just it's trash so what I will do is with this little bucket I will soak it for 24 hours and then I'll pour it in here and then once it starts and hopefully you can see that but once it starts to sprout so once those little white things start to pop then I will give it to to the chickens and that way um, you know again at a molecular level it's changing the nutrients from the dry grain to a sprout and so it's just changing it from a, at a micro micro level and so when I do that then I will feed it to um, to the chickens um, gosh, what else am I leaving out so once the weather cools down a little bit then I'll start doing the fodder again um, what I've noticed with the chickens is the chickens love the um, the winter wheat I've been told they really like the wheat grass as well, but I can't I can't uh, I can't say that for sure because um, you know I've never grown any because it's it starts to mold on me. Um, the barley, the chickens, eh, they're kind of okay. The pigs, the pigs eat the barley up. Um, I will say on the pigs and the and the fodder up at the farm where I've got the corn. Um, the corn just smells nasty. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's it doesn't it's it's not a I, mean, I can't I can't explain this the smell. But if I stick my hand in um, in the, the the bucket with the corn fermentation for the pigs, I mean, literally that smell is still on my hands hours later after you know four five six times having to wash my hands because i'll come home and the kids will look at me and like dad did you feed the pigs you know this is hours afterwards so and i don't know if it's just the corn or if i'm not getting enough oxygen uh in there or not but uh um, so i'm trying to give you as much as i know about fermentation and fodder and i think i have extinguished my limited knowledge but I will say and here here's the way I, that I look at because uh, I've really been thinking a lot about about uh, uh, animal food lately and here's the best way that I guess 
hopefully this makes sense, but it's the best way that I can, um, that makes sense to me is, is like with the lawn business, um, labor is, you know, it's my best friend or it's my enemy. So if we do, you know, one job and it takes, you know, an hour more than I thought, then obviously I lose money. Well, that's kind of the same way that I'm, that I'm looking at, uh, animal food is just like labor. I know it's going to happen, but if I'm wasting so much more food, then obviously that cuts into my profitability. And if I'm not using as much, but getting the same productivity out of it, so to speak, then that increases my, my pro or, uh, profitability. And so that's what I'm trying to do is, is I'm trying to move from a, a part-time hobby farm into a full-time full -time gig. And one of the things that, that um, the way I understand from full-time farmers is their food cost, just like labor, their food cost is their highest cost. And so if I can reduce that 10, 15, 20, 30, whatever percent, um, then that's going to increase my profitability. It's going to enable me to do more of what I want to do. And so what I will say with fermentation and with fodder, my food costs have dropped easy 70%. I'm thinking closer to 80, 85, 90%. So I have a friend of mine brought me four bags of uh, uh, processed chicken feed and I still have three bags in my garage. So I've had, I've used one bag of chicken feed out there for those chickens and that's probably lasted me almost a month. And one bag of chicken scratch lasts me two weeks something like that and then I wish I could grow more fodder because I can get more bang for my buck with the fodder but with the uh, with the sprouting of the grains um, you know that's you know I, I got that that 55 almost 55, 55 gallon drum full of grain and it's still I've still got half of it left and I put some of it in here I've sprouted some so I still have a lot left over so my food costs are definitely dropping and it's all for and it's all because of fermentation and fodder. So that's the way I see it. Um, again, I'm no expert. I'm still learning, but I just wanted to show you what I've learned so far. And hopefully, if you do it, um, it will. You know, you know, you'll be able to learn from some of my mistakes, and just and you can just jump to what works. So um, this was. This is going to be a continual process that I'm that I'll, I'll be working on. But hopefully, um, hopefully it helps, and hopefully I can help you. So I appreciate y'all. Y'all take care. Bye. Hey guys, I wasn't planning on a part two, but here's a part two uh, because I forgot how to tell you that how to uh, ferment uh, grain. So it's really easy. You just take that that big um, trash can, you fill it up about three quarters full of water, let it sit uh, 24, 48 hours, let all the the chlorine vaporize off, and then um, you get a big uh, tub of yogurt. It's not you know not the small one, but I don't know. How many ounces but it's the big the big thing it doesn't have to be flavored it can just be plain old yogurt you just take that yogurt and dump it in there swirl it around a little bit try to dissolve it as much as you can then you put your grains in and about three days later you've got fermented grains so um, so minimum three days but that's how you do it it's super super simple and uh, I mean it it works well so Anyway, thanks for watching. I really appreciate y'all. Y'all take care. Bye.